it's about finding beauty. It doesn't mean that, um, yeah, life is all easy and simple and, you know, we can't escape those challenges. And even out here, it's, it's always so easy to romanticize a life that we do not have. Hello, my loves. Welcome back to the Lavender Lifestyle Podcast. It's Eileen. Have you ever fantasized about living in a small cottage in the woods? Today's guest is truly the embodiment of that lifestyle. In this episode, we talk about slow living, rural living, and the internal work it takes to achieve inner peace and happiness. Our lovely guest today is Paula Merrill. Paula Merrill is a Puerto Rican American living in a rural valley in Washington state. She is a writer, artist, and the creator of the YouTube channel, The Cottage Fairy. She creates meditative short films focused on slow living and bringing awareness to the beauty of wild lands. Before we begin, I just want to let you know that we are launching our 2024 Artist of Life workbook on October 18th. The Artist of Life workbook is our guided journal to help you create your most intentional year in 2024 filled with so many exercises and journaling prompts. So you can find it at shop.lavendaire.com October 18th. Hello, Paula. How are you doing? I'm doing very well today. Yeah, it's just a, a wonderful time of year where, um, you know, it's not too cold, not too hot. So yeah. just settling into autumn very soon, hopefully. Amazing. Okay, why don't we start today with your story? So were you always into slow living and nature? Oh, goodness. Um, I would say I always had a little bit of an interest um, growing up. I always loved uh, reading and art and a lot of kind of more mindful ways to pass the time. But uh, kind of getting older and getting caught up in university and adult life, it, I kind of um, went in a different direction for quite a while. I was definitely a workaholic and very anxious person. And so it kind of got to the point where I was like, hmm, you know, I really need to make some changes in my life. And that's kind of when I started perhaps kind of coming home to my uh, more uh, my roots, maybe who kind of I was on the inside and really reconnected with kind of that more mindful and slower way of living that I'd always been interested in, but hadn't really applied. And so then by chance, life took me over here in a more rural area and um, I got even more interested in it and it kind of went from there. So where did you grow up and then where are you now exactly? Yeah. So I grew up kind of all over the place. I was the daughter, I am the daughter of a Navy doctor. And so, gosh, we were moving around kind of every other, you know, few years. So I spent most of my time here in Washington state, but we also, my father was deployed in Italy, in Cuba. Um, I also went to college in Ireland to be a lot closer wow. to my parents who were in Italy at the time. And so even uh, Puerto Rico, where my mother is from, she's a native Puerto Rican. I spent a portion of my childhood there as well. So just a little bit of everywhere in several states. So wow. it's just truly been, global. It's been wild. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 funny. It's um definitely I think something a type of childhood that people that may have not traveled very much romanticize, but it definitely leaves its mark as well. There's so many amazing aspects of it, but then you also don't really have this sense of being settled and where is exactly. home and right. where do I belong? And, you know, you don't have friends that you knew for more than a couple of years and you're always changing location. So definitely a lot of positives as well as a lot of uh, challenges as with right. any childhood, no matter what, I suppose. Oh, I can imagine. So how do you think mm -hmm. that upbringing like influenced the kind of life that you want to live now? Yeah, I suppose um I really enjoyed it. I think it I think it is such an incredible privilege to be able to grow up in communities that are extremely diverse. At least that was my experience on the military basis I was on. So I think that had a huge impact on me because I always felt like, you know, I there wasn't there was just so much influence of all these different cultures and different types of people, especially when we were stationed abroad. So I think that always uh inspired me to want to um, kind of reach out and uh, create art that, um, you know, in all its shapes and forms that kind of spoke to everyone, hopefully on some shape and form. And um, I think, you know, an aspect of that is what do we all have in common? And I think one thing for sure is trying to be a lot more um, 
mindful and aware of ourselves throughout our daily lives, not getting too caught up in um, the stresses that we all experience no matter where we're at. But yeah, I think that's kind of where a lot of my uh, uh, interest in my more uh, perspective on life came from. It was definitely shaped a lot by that. And definitely as well, uh, running around a lot, you know, always being in a new place, in a, a new situation, uh, always in new environments where um, there were new languages and new types of people. I um, was also inspired to find where I belonged and what my home was. So, um, so yeah, I think uh, that definitely led me here. And choosing a kind of slower, more thoughtful life was something very positive for me. Yeah. So, so when did you begin living the cottage life <laughs> and how did this happen? Was it very intentional or yeah, th- what's that story? Oh, you know, um, that's a good question. Um, well, I moved over here because I was, uh, uh got a job as a preschool teacher at this uh, very small little alternative preschool in this town. And then um, my mother had happened to be living here at the time as well. And I thought, oh, you know, typical Hispanic. I'm just meant, I'm like, I'm meant to be near family. So it just meant very, felt very natural to do that. And um, so I went ahead and moved over there and uh, I started working there. And I, gosh, I think I just fell in love with um, the environment and just the beauty of the whole area. Next question, what inspired you to start your YouTube channel, The Cottage Fairy? Yeah, you know, I think it was, I don't think it was too interesting. Unfortunately, I was uh, partially laid off and I really had suddenly all this time during lockdown. And I was like, I I want to, um, this is such a gift to be able to have some time where I don't need to be working so many hours, you know, I'm here at home, what might I do with this? And I was feeling a lot of the feelings I think we all were during that time. And I was like, you know what, Um, you know, this where I live is an area where a lot of people come to be with nature. We get, gosh, I think about half a million people come and visit this area every year just to experience the beauty of this valley. And none of those people were coming because they couldn't, you know, they were at home and, um, I just thought, you know, maybe I can share a little bit of this with them. I know a lot of them had reached out, friends and family that were like, you know, I'm, I'm stuck at home, you know, I can't really go anywhere. And, uh, and it just, I I thought, you know, I would mesh that with my interest in art and poetry and, um, and see where that took me. And I just kind of started having fun with my, just with my phone. I filmed, I think the first gosh, hundred videos or maybe not 150 videos or so with just my iPhone and um, putting all that together. And I had no idea what I was doing. Wow. I uh, I think the artist in me, I had that sense of uh, framing shots in a way that I found beautiful and uh, showing nature. And so I think it gave the impression I knew what I was doing and <laughs> I definitely wasn't. And um, yeah, I don't, I don't even think the first two, three dozen videos you can have, like, are even in HD. It's, it's pretty (laughs) wild. Yeah. (laughs) So it's funny looking back how much I've learned. Um, But yeah, I just started with that. And then gosh, about four months in, it just started um, uh, bringing in a lot more traction. And um, I, my main focus was always to be a watercolor artist. I am very passionate about that. And, but I was like, wow, this is something new. Clearly this speaks to people. A lot of people are feeling the way I'm feeling. Um, I'm not alone. And that just inspired me further to just keep going and see where it takes me. And I, I think I'm still there. I still yeah. don't know where this will go. I mean, you for sure, you know, the ups and downs of uh, being a creator and just, you know, I don't have what that whole experience is like. It's not, you know, always easy mentally kind of not knowing what tomorrow is going to hold. But, um, but yeah, I just uh, went from there. And um so far, it's been a whirlwind. I've grown a lot through the journey and uh, I've been enjoying it though. I have. Right. I bet. I love that story. I love how you just like, you had the time you're like, let's just make art and you didn't have any expectations for what it would become. And you know what? I just got to say, you have a natural talent because if you've only been doing it since the pandemic and you started on an iPhone, like your videos are so beautiful. The way they're shot, the way they're like... 
I would, I would think that you would have ex- more experience. Like you just, it's very professional. It's so well done. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate that. I feel like the nature definitely does a lot of it for me, but, um, but yeah, I've definitely learned a lot. I'm lucky that my brother, he, uh, had a lot of interest in film at the time and he was, uh, working with cameras and stuff. So he took a little time off to visit and he taught me how to finally use a real camera and that really helped me uh, create a lot more professional looking stuff. But yeah, but it's uh, it's been a lot to learn. That's for sure. I have about two or three notebooks just full of step-by-step instructions that he wrote out for me <laughs> so that I know like you turn on the camera and then you focus <laughs> it and then you put it oh, on this setting I and see. then, yeah. Wow, so that's, it's definitely that's really nice. You're like, it seems like I know other. a lot more, but mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> He does. He still troubleshoots things for me from all the way from Australia where he lives now. (laughs) Oh, that's so sweet. It's a group effort. All right. It's time for a break with our sponsor. The show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Ever feel like you're having a battle in your own mind, knowing what's good for you, but struggling to do it? We've all been there. Therapy can help untangle these mental knots, allowing you to work with, not against yourself. I've personally worked with a therapist on releasing anxiety and negative thought patterns, as well as working towards improving my sleep. I have such an active mind at night that it can be hard to fall asleep, so I'm working on the habits that can help my mind find calm. If you're considering therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. And you can always switch therapists at any time at no additional charge. Make your brain your friend with BetterHelp help. Visit betterhelp.com slash TLL today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp.com slash TLL. I also want to talk about how like this, you know, that cottage core was such a huge trend that started around the pandemic and a few years after. And I want to know how, like, I just felt like the timing was right. Like you were already living this lifestyle yes. and you, once you started mm-hmm. to post it, people were stuck at home and everybody was like envisioning, I want to live in a cottage in nature. Right. So you were essentially living everyone's dream at that time. Yeah. Let's talk about that. Like, did you, what is your take? Do, do you feel like Isn't you, that, I don't know, do you, did you even realize it was a trend when you started posting about You know, I, I didn't, I think, cause, uh, I first started out just posting my watercolor art cause that was my main focus. I was like, well, I want to get out there as a watercolor artist. And I'd, um, kind of grew up in a fairly kind of technology free environment. So I had like a flip phone up until I was in my early twenties. So I was, uh, and I didn't even have an Instagram account. So I remember I opened my Instagram account and I started posting my watercolor art. And it wasn't until I posted this very specific painting during the lockdown of this, a girl reading with trees around her that someone wrote, this is so cottage core. (laughs) <laughs> and I just remember being so confused like, what about is that? what that, what, it, what, you know, and, um, and then when I started putting up videos, I hadn't looked much into it, but once I started putting up videos, then I saw that term coming up more and more. And, and it was funny because, uh, it also being treated as this new thing when, you know, I'd always been kind of interested in, you know, home economics and all these things that we associate with kind of more slow living. And, um, gosh, since I was a child, I was having my mother make me vintage dresses because I was just loved the style. So it was like, you are that girl. You you (laughs) are that girl that everyone's envisioning. (laughs) I know, right? Oh my goodness. Well, I could tell you, gosh, I remember um, it was like, uh, I was partially kind of in and out of school growing up. I was did like schooling at home because we were moving around so much. My, uh, my uh, mother, you know, decided to just, instead of having us change to a brand new environment all the time, she decided to do partially homeschooling with online courses. And so when I first started my full day at like a real normal school, I remember I had her make me um, a Laura Ingalls dress because I really wanted to wear one of those like vintage style kind of more pioneer dresses to school. I thought this was a good call. I I was 12. So (laughs) I I really thought this was like the fashion. Um, And I remember going and there were just these just kids staring at me and they're wonderful jeans and t-shirts and just what they, even one of them asked me like do you have a phone where you live and I just remember being so confused of like wait what you know so 
definitely that interest was there early on. And uh, yeah, definitely. I think part of my upbringing helped me be very um, uh, unconcerned about comparison and trying to be a certain way, just accepting my own interests. So that definitely uh, uh, brought me to this point now for sure. Wow. And I think it's a blessing that you weren't plugged into the internet or Instagram and you got to grow up in your own space. I think that's a beautiful right. thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a definitely, it's a certain things I really love about it. You know, I also know there's so many things I, uh, cultural moments I probably wasn't part of either. So I've been <laughs> catching up since then. So it's okay. You're part of this moment. <laughs> like, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you're you're living like people romanticize living your type of lifestyle essentially, right? And that's uh, that's another thing that has uh, kind of always followed me on this channel. I've always talked about how you know I create short films. I like to imbue my love of you know I've, I'm a huge lover of fairy tales and folklore. I studied them in university. Um, I'm an English major and. Um, I have always loved that element of whimsy and storytelling, and I love movies that kind of show things from a romantic fairy tale perspective. Um, but I know it's so hard online as well because um, you want to share art, you want to share things that you've honed and created and edited and polished. But um, there's also, you know, the grunt work behind it, and you know, the reality of real living is not all, you know, simplicity. You know, there's really frustrating moments where I need to dig out my driveway every other day during the winter, you know, just to get out and the snowplow might not come for five days. So, you know, um, definitely in my other cottage, I mentioned several times that I didn't have like a a running water in, in one of the rooms and, um, there were power outages and things like that. And, um, and yet I think for me in terms of my own kind of mental health journey, um, no matter where I was in life, I really wanted to uh, focus on what would help me through challenges, no matter what, and what was uh, the beauty or what I could find to be grateful for in every moment, no matter what challenges, my my own tendency towards anxiety or any other thing I was going through internally or externally. And, um, and I think that's where a lot of the artistic videos came from. But I think at least when I uh, try to speak to whoever is watching them, um, I try to always share that, you know, it's, it's about finding beauty. It doesn't mean that, um, yeah, life is all easy and simple and, you know, we can't escape those challenges. And Mm -hmm. even out here, it's, it's always so easy to romanticize a life that we do not have, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I romanticize being in a city sometimes where I could go and get sushi, that would be amazing. Yeah, I think <laughs> it's always fresh the, fish would be that, so great because <laughs> because real life yeah. has its challenges, right? But so people say think the grass is greener, but there's there's mm-hmm. both good and bad pros and cons. Yes, in every situation. no matter where we're at. Yeah, mm-hmm. gosh, over here there's so many families that move over here and are just so excited and they go a few winters where it's <sighs> negative forty one day oh and gosh. they just realize with you know absolutely, you know, I completely understand that it just isn't meant for them. It's not, it's not where their life can thrive at this point or where they're at, or their personality might not mesh well with a more rural area where, um, you know, there's not as many people and there's, you know, less people to, uh, uh, it's harder maybe to find your group of people that understand you and all that. And so there's definitely these challenges that I think people uh, realize once they live over here, as well as I'm sure if, you know, you live in a city or in a suburban area, there's challenges everywhere. But, um, but yeah, I always try to keep that in mind and share that in videos sometimes that, um, yeah, it's so much easier to project what we you know, all these positive feelings on something that we're, we don't have at one moment. Um, and uh, I think it, it gives us hopefully a lot of room for self-reflection and to see there's probably so much incredible things going on where we're at right now. And if not, you know, seeing, understanding that life isn't perfect no matter where you are you are, and your challenges follow you all over the place. And out here, I've still had to even more so come to terms with anxiety management and, and, uh, being comfortable with myself and being alone. You experience that a lot out in a rural area. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, I always try to bring that back in my videos, you know, this is art and there's a lot more to it. And, you know, there's a, yeah. 
I love that point. And, and there's also that part where people fantasize about going away in nature and running away from their problems. But you're saying right. when you live alone in a rural <laughs> area, all you have is yourself and your mind. Your and pro- so- yeah, you have your problems. They're right exactly, there they're with exactly. you. <laughs> so you're going to have to face it wherever you are. Yeah, I think that mm-hmm. surprises people. I know people sometimes you know, come over here from Seattle, which is just a huge right. city, not too far away. And and they're just here, like, I'm here to relax. And it's not relaxing because they chose <laughs> a cabin really far away from everyone. And they're just there with all their, uh, you know, everything that they kind of was going through and buzzing through their mind. And it's, it's there. And I, I think that's just a great reminder to all of us that, you know, we can change that, but changing location maybe, maybe will definitely help our situations can help and hinder us. But, um, but it's definitely about our relationship with ourselves at the end of the day, isn't it? Mm -hmm, (laughs) Definitely. Um, what is the biggest thing you feel like you've learned living alone? And do you have advice for people out there? (laughs) Right. Well, I, and it's funny, I lived alone for quite a while and now I'm, I'm with husband and gosh, four, four animals. They keep appearing all of the place. They keep appearing. There's so many of them. They just come to you. (laughs) Well, they just keep coming. It's really funny. I'm just surprised I haven't like brought in a wild animal yet by accident. It's just, yeah. But, um, oh yeah. The other day we, uh, not too long ago, we found this little baby owl right by the door. It just, it, it, it was just hanging out. I don't know why, but it left eventually. It was so cute. <laughs> yeah. Living alone. Goodness. Um, I, gosh, I did that in the little cottage for quite a while. And, um, thankfully I did have family that I would, you know, see all the time. I mean, goodness, I think my mother would just, she would just, disown me if I didn't see her (laughs) so much. She just culturally, it's just so important to always be with your family. So um, it was interesting staying in touch a lot for sure and seeing her all the time, but also spending a lot more time alone than I ever had in the past. And um, yeah, it's a very, very interesting experience. And I think it all depends on the person with how they take it, you know, but I know for a lot of people can be really uncomfortable Um, and for me at times it was for sure, because, um, you kind of have nowhere to turn to sometimes you really have to, uh, make sure that your mind and body are reflecting the peace that you want to be experiencing and becoming aware of that internal dialogue and deciding that, you know, it's really time to make that work for you instead of hinder you. And, um, that was the biggest challenge for me, changing that internal dialogue, but, uh, and oh goodness, I, I'm still still a student for sure. I, Definitely. Hopefully someday I will be able to really, um, you know, master it even more. But um, but yeah, I think that's definitely the thing. You need to be very aware of your uh, how you think of yourself and you perceive yourself as well as others. And um, I think that the more you nurture that in a positive way, gosh, the the freedom that you feel is just so amazing. Love that. All right, my loves, let's take another break for our sponsor, Mosh. Life can feel overwhelming at times. With our busy schedules, it's often a challenge to stay healthy when we want to reach for a tasty snack. Enter Mosh, the brain-boosting protein bar. Mosh is no ordinary protein bar. It's designed with your brain and body in mind. With six delicious flavors, each Mosh bar includes 12 grams of protein and is made with ingredients that support brain health like ashwagandha, lion's mane, collagen, and omega-3s. At only 160 calories with just one gram of sugar, Mosh is the guilt-free snack your brain and body will thank you for. Plus, these bars were mindfully crafted by top neuroscientists and functional nutritionists nutritionist so you know you're getting the best of the best. My personal favorite is the cookie dough crunch flavor. It satisfies my sweet tooth without the guilt. Mosh protein bars will keep your brain and body fit, fueled, and feeling good. Head to moshlife.com slash TLL to save 20% off plus free shipping on your first six count trial pack. That's 20% off plus free shipping on your first six count trial pack, which includes all six mouthwatering flavors. M-O-S-H-L-I-F-E dot com slash T-L-L. Why don't we talk about your definition of your dream life? I'm curious, like, what does that look like to you? You know, I think I had, I had so many visions of what a dream life would be growing up. And I, 
I don't think I have it anymore. I think it's kind of more of the bloom where you're planted now. I um, nice. I know that's easy to say now because I have, you know, after many years of having a lot of kind of financial worries and all that, finally being married and feeling like I have a home and I have food and shelter. And these are things that I don't have to be, you know, terrified of losing anymore which I still am, which is part of that internal mm-hmm. dialogue yeah, <laughs> question. Yeah. But um, I think, you know, in terms of that, when you have your um, basic needs met, um, I find that it's, you know, really up to me whether or not um, I can thrive wherever I am, as long as those, you know, those needs are met, makes such a big difference for sure. It's such a, such a blessing to have that. Um, and yeah, I think now, gosh, it, a dream life is um, finding um, that peace, you know, internally. And um, once that's there, it's like, um, you know, life still is hard, but everything is doable. You know, you can right. thrive no matter what, and and you can have a lot taken away from you. And if if anything, I think part of finding that peace is having those things taken away from you. Mm-hmm. I think for me, getting right. to a point. Um, in my career where my anxiety was so bad that I felt like I never felt safe. I never felt at ease. I had all of that feeling of security taken away from me and that sense of I have control over my life. And I, even though it was so hard to see at the time, I needed that to happen because if I I needed it all taken away, because then you realize um, how to become the source of your own peace and joy. It's not about anything external. And once you have that, it's, it's, um, you have your dream life just like that. (laughs) I love that. That's so beautiful. I can, I can totally relate. It's like the older I get, the more I want less and all I care about is inner peace. And also that, yeah. and, And that experience of like, you have to lose everything or like you have to experience those lows to recognize like, oh, I'm still alive. I'm still here. So right. It, right. You know true? what I mean? So yeah. it's like, oh, There's I maybe so I didn't really need this. it to feel safe. Cause I understand right? like I, what, cause I think a lot of us grow up with some level of like scarcity or insecurity, like that maybe we didn't feel safe, right. As a child. So it's, I, I've also been like, like this is just a, a mental health internal thing is like finding that sense of safety within myself that doesn't rely on anything external. Right? right. And I think that that is one of the greatest challenges of life to overcome. And it's a, an invisible challenge to a lot of people. You know, there's nothing, you don't have a trophy or anything to prove you know, that you've right, you can't tell on the outside. For yourself. <laughs> yeah. Right. You know, you can tell people yeah. like, Oh my gosh, I've, I've achieved, I am my own safe space. And people will be like, okay, well you look the same. <laughs> yes. Exactly. You know, you can't, Everything there's on the nothing to prove. Yeah. But once you do achieve that, it's like you're invincible because you can lose it all and you're still okay. I think that's the most powerful thing you could have. Right. I, yeah. I just, yeah, that, that for me, and, and I say that being someone who's still learning and will yeah. continue to be learning their entire Absolutely. lives, you know? Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think finding that is, but you're right. I think those hard emotions, um, I think for me with overcoming, um, being someone who tended to be stressed, it was, um, become comfortable with being uncomfortable. You know, once you can do that, you know, you, you, you become so much stronger and everything, um, all these challenges, um, they, they help you grow and all those hard things have meaning instead of just being hard things, you know? Definitely. Do you have advice, whether it's to someone out there who has anxiety or maybe like if you think about your younger self, like what advice would you give to that younger version of you on how to find that level of inner peace? Because it is a journey. We're all on this journey. Right? It is. Um, Gosh. I th- yeah. Where, where, where would you advise people to start? Right. I think we all have a lot of uh, wisdom that we can tap into. Um, I always get uh, reticent to give too much advice because I'm just so convinced that for each person, it's different. I don't know. I, I've met some of the wisest you know, people, at least from my perspective I've ever met, have been people that have told me they don't have um, you know, much to offer specifically for me that they just encourage me to find my path and where I'm going to go. Because as much as they try, they can't 
quite exactly step into my shoes and see things from my perspective. And my answers might be different to their right. answers. That's true. And so I try to uh, remember that. But one thing I would say would be take time for to nurture yourself and to really uh, be honest with yourself and work on that mental health journey. And I mean, for me, it's part, you know, part and parcel with the spiritual journey as well. And, and bringing all that together, uh, really work on it. Don't, don't wait, don't suppress it. Don't, you know, sweep it under the rug just because life circumstances are really busy or stressful and you just don't feel like you have the energy or time to put into that. Because, uh, at least for me, I did that for so many years that I was like, gosh, I'm super competitive in school. I'm not going to think about my stress. I'm going to suppress all these things, you know, challenges and things um, I went through, really hard moments, bad relationships, all these kind of undigested, subconscious, emotional stuff, just all, you know, living within me without being really, without me letting myself open that jar and look into it. Um, I think I just got to a point where, um, you know, stress and all that forced me to face it. And it was so much harder because I'd been suppressing it for so long. And not to say that, you know, it was a mistake or anything. I'm on my own journey, but I just encourage everyone, no matter how young you are, you know, when you're feeling these emotions to, to face them, because if not, it just, um, it's going to ask you to face them at one point or another. And it might be even harder to deal with those things later in life and, um, and to not let things pile up. And yeah, and to, to find your courage, because it's, it's a hard thing to do, for sure. You know, it's an invisible journey, but I think I continue feeling like it's what really life is all about, of, of growing internally, mm -hmm. for sure. It's always like the, everything external is a reflection of the internal, and I feel like it's, it happens together, <laughs> right? For sure, right? Exactly. It's so interesting. Yes. Because I feel like when I'm hearing you talk about this, it's also the way you approach life, like the slow nurturing yourself, become aware and, and kind of, well, just through your video, seeing how you take care of your space and, and just the habits, right. That you build Thank every you. day. Yeah. Let's talk about your typical routine, because I think people are curious about how you live. So can you tell us about whether it, a, a typical day or a typical week in your life? Oh yeah. Um, goodness. I, uh, definitely spend a lot of time, uh, related to pets. <laughs> it's, uh, kind of happened without realizing it, but yeah, I definitely start the day for the most part with, um, making sure everyone's happy. I have a, uh, extremely excitable, vibrant Labrador that has no <laughs> off switch. Aww. And so we always try to take him out for a hike every morning if we can. Um, you know, uh, he, he, he definitely demands it. So even if I have work to finish or something, I try to wake up earlier so that I can get that for him. Cause I feel like, you know, if you help, um, help everyone around you, you know, uh, uh, if you're part of also supporting them, then they support you. And then he supports me for while I'm working, if I've supported mm, him by okay. joining him on a hike. Or something. <laughs> so right. I have a, a beautiful forest nearby. And so we go and we hike and, um, then we just, you know, try to spend some time making sure all the pets are, you know, feeling loved. And, um, yeah, then I usually sit down for, um, to do some work. It might be any variety of things. I might be filming. I might be editing. I'm sure, you know, editing takes so long, <laughs> so long. Um, but, um, I also like to, uh, work, uh, quite a bit on my art, which is definitely one of my main focuses is with my, um, uh, a shop with having new art on there. So I'm usually working on an art piece and, um, goodness, I, I definitely spend quite a while. I try to take breaks in between different tasks to spend 10 minutes or so, um, just in kind of silent contemplation and meditation just to kind of recenter while I'm trying to get these things done and reminding myself that, uh, productivity um, is, uh, not the end all and be all. It's not the necessary, the goal for the day it's, mm. it's being right. and, um, getting done. Of course, we all have responsibilities I have to. And so getting those things done, but also, um, not feeling this pressure to be going, uh, above and beyond, um, to make sure you're just spending time just 
being if you are able to, even if it's just five minutes of just sitting and looking at the clouds. So I try to make time for all of that. And then I actually work at my local bookstore. Our community um, uh, struggles sometimes to find affordable housing. I Gosh, I think that's everywhere all over the world, isn't it? <laughs> but our, our community, we, we struggle to find affordable housing for um, a lot of uh, young families and people that are working. So it felt like a really important way for me to find the time if I was able to be in my community and work as well to help try to keep businesses um, uh, around and support in my own small way. And so I do that as well. And I, I love books and stories. So I love to go do that every week as well. So it's it's definitely a mesh of a lot of different things for sure. Yeah. I was going to ask about that, that you work at the bookstore. So can you go deeper into like your, I, I guess you explained a little bit about why you do it, but was there like something that inspired you to do that? Or I don't know. You know, I think, uh, uh, I think after you know studying literature in, in college, I worked on several magazines as an editor and things like that. Um, I was not a very good editor. I'm <laughs> still surprised I was <laughs> encouraged so much, um, but I, I did that quite a bit. And um, uh, it was there that I got connected to a local bookstore in my college town, and I started working over there. And I really enjoyed it. Um, but when I moved over here, I kind of had that void left behind. I think that's the sign of a true passion, you know, when you just want to be around books, you know, and stories and connect with people. I think the same goes for libraries, but I think places that either give away or sell stories um, are such powerful places. They um, challenge us to be um, better versions of ourselves. Um, that kind of brings me to your book. Why don't we talk about the book that you wrote and what was the process? What What is it about? Tell us what it's about and the process writing it. Right. Well, I, uh, I just got asked by a lot of people um, that I, uh, uh, in the comment section in my videos, they're always talking about like, I'd love to see your videos in written form. You know, I'd love to um, read these things because I enjoy, um, you know, what you talk about. And um, I felt just so, it was just such a wonderful feeling uh, to feel that I um, definitely had tried to get books, you know, out there and published in the past. And the feedback had always been that um, I'm kind of too old fashioned in my speaking or writing style and that, um, that you know, I, I, I won't uh, necessarily be able to become a writer and um, definitely uh, kind of getting, not being able to ever do much with my writing despite uh, studying English was kind of a little uh, disappointing. That's strange, so, yeah. Uh, I just had, it was just such a wonderful feeling to, instead of taking my writing to, um, you know, professionals to critique, you know, just to share it with people, just right. an audience and, and suddenly getting such a different feedback. So that was really exciting. And so I decided to just kind of um, put a lot of the things that I was thinking about when creating my videos into written form along with some craft pot projects and recipes and things and uh, see what happened. And so it was a wonderful um, first experience. I would love to hone my skills and get feedback and become a, hopefully a very a, a better writer in the future as well. But uh, it, was, uh, it was a really fun project. So I'm glad so far the reception has been really lovely. Definitely. How long did you spend writing that book? Oh, goodness. Uh, I think about a year and a half or so. It took a while. And then there was a, due to, you know, supply chain issues with paper and all that, it was delayed longer because I went with a, a small independent uh, company. And so it was a really wonderful experience, but it did take longer to get out there. So, um, yeah, so it, I, yeah, a year and a half, I think, but um, yeah, it was a lot. It was a lot to take on, maybe a little more at the time than I should have, but I learned. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's impressive that you did all that when you just started your YouTube channel and everything. Yeah, right? it's a lot. I think um, I think perhaps a. Uh, I don't know if you experienced this as well. I I, I actually I, I remember watching your videos years ago, which is a uh, really exciting. I just love how like things come full circle. I was like, oh, what a lovely lady, and then oh. you know, here we go again. <laughs> right, <laughs> you know, just meeting you is just really exciting. But yeah, it's just an interesting experience, you know. Uh, uh, working on all that. and If you were to write other books in the future, because I feel like books are a very important part of your life, even just seeing your background, all these books in your library, what what other books do you think are, are going to come out of you in the future? 
Oh my gosh. Well, you know, I am writing a children's book right now and that's always been the goal. I love, uh, I mean, working at a preschool, I, I love being, you know, uh, being around children and hearing their stories, which are amazing and hilarious half the time. Um, but yeah, I wanted to write, um, something for, uh, children that could also be enjoyed by adults and, uh, have a lot of, uh, those, uh, themes that no matter what age you were at, you can, um, benefit from. So, um, I have written that and I'm hoping to get, uh, that published someday. So we'll see. <laughs> Next, I want to ask you, how do you feel you've changed since you began this journey of the cottage fairy and where, where are you now? Yeah, I can't even begin with how much I, I've just changed so much. I think, I mean, I think also creating online and putting things out there changes you drastically as a person. I mean, I'd love to hear your experience as well about that because um, I, I think it challenges you, you in all the best and worst ways, maybe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think uh, getting a lot of people watching and feedback and all that, um, all the the positive, the negative, the in-between, the um, all those things really impact you in so many ways. And I think they make you aware of um, yourself too. I, I mean, I was surprised myself with things I didn't even know. I, uh, feelings I didn't even know I would feel to, you know, come up in this experience of putting out, you know, um, videos and to people. And so I think that's changed me so much because a lot of my earlier videos, I was talking about things I wanted to implement in my life, you know, slowing down, working less, doing these things, but I wasn't applying them. I don't think I was even really trying. I thought I was trying <laughs> to slow down and be more mindful, but I think the excitement and the amazing opportunity of being able to, you know, put out, you know, uh, videos and art and all that. And I got caught up in that so much. It was really hard to put the brakes and to remember that, it's really important to, um, you know, to be taking care of yourself and checking in no matter what, you know, no matter how busy things get, it's, it's not worth it. If at the end you're burned out and you're right. just feeling like there's, there's nothing left and, and that motivation. And so I had those moments, um, a couple years in, and it was really wonderful to get to that point where I was like, wow, I am, I am, uh, I'm so burned out. I, I'm so stressed. I don't know kind of what it's like to feel like, you know, normal, whatever that means. I think it's usually our own standard <laughs> that we've created, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, I definitely had to start doing a lot more work. Um, you know, there's not too many, there's not very many in-person therapy options, um, here, but, uh, definitely there's some online ones, but reading a lot of therapy books, you know, really getting in touch with my own spiritual path and and trying to um, grow in my own way, not by anyone else's standards, but finding my own answers was um, really important. So I think in a way I started this channel wanting to be a peaceful person. <laughs> and I think now I'm much closer to being that peaceful person. I'm really happy that happened. It happened in right? an un unexpected way, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. It's like you just get dragged through the, you know, through the fire. And yep, you, yep. Yeah. And then you're kind of forced to come to terms, you know, with yourself. I think that's one thing that I encourage everyone that's ever thinking about putting themselves out there in any shape or form, you know, do it because it doesn't matter the end result. It doesn't matter what happens because you're going to gain so much from it no matter what. Yeah. I, I feel like, like what I said earlier, how there are things happening externally, but it's really affecting you internally. I think a lot of the external things you go through at least in this career as a content creator, putting stuff out there consistently, it's like all of it in my perspective is for my own healing journey. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Right? It's, and it's wonderful? funny because yeah. people don't always see what's really happening, but it's, it's impacting you and shaping you for the better. It's putting you through those challenges. It's revealing your insecurities. It's revealing your own self-criticism. It's everything. <laughs> so it's a it's an internal journey that it's putting you through. Mm -hmm. And I think once you embrace that, then that that truly is as hard as it can be, and uh, it's such a liberating experience because suddenly it's like there's nothing to lose. There's only to gain from putting yourself out there and trying new things and making yourself uncomfortable. Yeah, there's there's no bad thing that could come out of it because you're gonna you're open to learn from it no matter what. Right. 
That brings me to my next question because I know that you're all about living a slow, mindful life. You're in nature, but I know that the the you're a business owner, content creator, like that life is very fast paced. So how do you marry the two? Right. How yeah. how does that make sense in your life? And what have you, you know, learned? Um I feel like my answer is not the answer I wish it was, but um for me it was um dialing it back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I like not gosh, expecting I think, um, 100%, not right? expecting productivity. Right. Mm-hmm. Yep. I think that, um, I think so often, I mean, I think early on I was reading so many self-help books of people that were teaching like these messages of how to be super productive and take care of your mental health and be, and be mindful and all that and how to marry these things. And, um, I just, um, I, d- I don't know if that's true in <laughs> my personal <laughs> right. experience. I won't speak yeah. for other people. I know there are people that can, I'm sure, can balance those things. But for me, it was not something that was true. That, um, And I think for a lot of people, especially if you're more sensitive or you're, um, you know, just living in general without just being alive, not even considering anything else um, is a challenge in and of itself. It's about just creating that relationship. So that's uh, more than enough (laughs) for me. But yeah, I think dialing it back in terms of once I started developing my, uh, my true goal of like, I actually want to be a more peaceful person. I don't want to just go around saying that's what I want to be, but I, I want to live it. Um, it did mean starting to skip weeks and not creating, you know, videos. It was not about staying up until 3 a.m. just to get that one thing out at that very specific time. It was, um, it was seeing, uh, realizing that looking even, I mean, I'll be brutally honest, looking at numbers and realizing that the healthier, more balanced I got, um, my um, career was definitely not in the same place it had been before. Um, and I think that was really interesting. Um, and uh, and even getting sometimes mixed feedback, you know, on um, not everyone, you know, I'm sure a lot of people can relate to that journey, but not everyone can. Some people are like, you know, I, I just can't relate to being uh, happier, being more like peaceful, more mindful, you know, these things are just not things that interest uh, me in terms of making lifestyle changes and, and yeah, and seeing those changes and, and uh, realizing it's, you know, that's why I think that when you work on yourself and you improve in the ways that you need to and grow, um, it really, you do have to do it for yourself and, and nothing else because, um, the world may not always reward you taking time to go sit on a hill and look at the clouds and release, you know, not let any more cortisol build up, you know, um, and you gotta, you gotta know that it's worth it no matter what. And I think you realize why it's worth it when you, when you start, Um, and I think that for me is like, I just didn't realize, you know, what's the point if I, you know, can't keep up all these things and juggle all these things, this is what it's all about. And then realizing, oh, that's really not, it's, it's really not that important in the scheme of things. And, and I love the people that watch my videos and they love when I am the best version of myself. And that means sometimes that I'm not there. And so yeah, I think it's the answer is I don't juggle them. I try to just keep it at a pace that works for me. And I still sometimes have stressful nights when I'm like, oh, I got to get this done. And I, I keep getting better at at putting the brakes and being like, is it is it worth it? You know, because, you know, today is all you have. Is it really worth feeding that today? Because what if, you know, what if tomorrow is not what you expected, you know? Um Really, is that is that how you want to spend this time? When when it's an option not to, because we don't always have that option. And um, but if we have the incredible blessing of having that option to stop, you know, why why would we not? You know, so at least this is stuff I'm trying to apply. But it's hard. There's so much pressure. <laughs> it's okay. I, I I think I I totally understand what you're saying, and it's so nice to hear what you're saying as a creator and also a business owner because I've also I think. It's about your values and your focus shifting, right? If you value your inner peace, then it means that your the priority that your productivity or your career it, it's going to go down a little bit. And the reality is, like you said, is like 
the happier and more peaceful and balanced I feel like I might not be creating as much. I might not be achieving as much and the numbers, everything will go down. And it's about being okay with that, knowing that you value your, you prioritize and value like your inner peace. Right. right so exactly. It, it goes against what society is trying to teach us. Oh, you have to be the best all the time. Right. Yeah. I think even just like, you know, watch commercials for half an hour and nine out of 10 of them are about how to save time and to be more productive to say like, don't make your breakfast, have the like milkshake. Have I mean, I do sometimes, but you know, <laughs> you know, like, I'll, you know, find ways to like save a few minutes here and there and speed up to get more done in less time and all that. And that may be the answer for some people, but for me, and I know for, for a lot of people, it's a, uh, it just adds fuel to that internal chaos. And, and yeah, once you have that, those still waters, you realize, oh, it's like I'm, I'm living again. <laughs> right. At least from my experience, I realized that my stress was not worth the success. It's like, I'd rather feel happy right. and calm and at peace. I think a lot of people are fueled by that. Oh, not enough. Like I have that, whether it's perfectionism or- I need to succeed. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So it just, I think the lesson is it all depends on what you value as a person and, and to also to not judge other people for how they live their life. Cause, cause uh, other people, like, let's say they value like success and career. They might look at you and not, they, they'll be like, Oh, she, she's not doing it right because she's whatever. Right. But it's like each person has different values and they prioritize different things, which I think is beautiful. So as long as you feel good about your life, and about yourself, then that's great. Yeah, you're you're so right. It's uh, I guess uh, like yeah, different answers for different people and what you prioritize. But I I do love. I think that's the hidden challenge of living for peace and happiness because it doesn't always show externally, and yet um, you know you uh, uh in, in terms of your career, what you're doing, and yet uh, you know its value, and that's why all all that great yeah. change needs to be come from yourself. And I, I don't know about you, but, you know, I assume because you exude this aura of, uh, of kindness, um, mm -hmm. that the people in your immediate space do see that change. At least that's been the feedback I've gotten from I my own so. family. People like, can wow, feel that. Are, yeah. You yeah. are uh, so happy. You are mm. um, so much more peaceful. It is, you know, the, these waves have leveled out into much more manageable waves for you mm. and there's still ups and downs, but, um, but you know you are you're living on your own terms and i'm i'm it, it means so much to get that feedback and i think it's that um and to get feedback from others that oh you know you choosing this has inspired me to like take a little more time you know uh, uh away from the office to spend a little more time with my my pets or my family and just feeling that like realization of when you heal other people also want to heal and you heal each other and and it's just it's it's so wonderful but you're right it's all an individual journey you know I could talk to a different person and they'll have a completely different philosophy on life you know right but, <laughs> but I at least I, I think we're on the same page where we at we're at the point where the internal matters more than the external and and also the fact that you're healing and you're still creating like whatever you create and share with others will spread healing as well. So I think that's beautiful. Hmm. Thank you. All right. So what are you excited about in life right now? I want to know, is there anything that you're loving, anything you're looking forward to? For for some reason, it immediately came to mind was the winter, which I'm not excited about. So I don't yeah. know why that opposite <laughs> thing came to mind. But last year, yeah, we how, had six months of snow. I'm so curious. Uh, how do you survive just, this? <sighs> <laughs> do you have to stock up on well, food? Like what is winter right, in you know, where you well, live? Thankfully we, uh, thankfully we have a, a very lovely, very expensive grocery store nearby. Oh. <laughs> but, um, you know, so we do try to make it work while trying to stay on a budget, which is hard. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, it's, it's a, it is, gosh, it, usually the winters are more mild. Um, and of course they've been getting warmer throughout these last, um, uh, decade, but, um, but this one by chance was just a really heavy winter last year. And, um, uh, yeah. And just, I had not experienced snow on the ground and not seeing the grass for six months before. And that was 
to spend half the year, like I, I see these YouTubers that are living in like super Northern areas and I'm just, how do you do it? It's amazing. The winter is beautiful over here. You, there's nothing like having new fallen snow on everything and the hoarfrost and it's, it's gorgeous. But uh, after five months, you are ready. <laughs> You're like, warm. I'm over it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know why that came. That's definitely not what I'm excited about, That's but funny. I am excited to learn new ways to enjoy the winter time mm. and to um, uh, discover new things. You know what? That uh, could be a whole series. Celebrate the season. That right? should be a whole <laughs> yeah, right? series on your channel. <laughs> How to enjoy the winter enjoy when, you know, you really like the sun. <laughs> so, uh, no, the winter is yeah, very beautiful, but, but, but there's the right? realities of living through it. Right? I understand. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> it's hard on your car out here. And sometimes, you know, the snow plows don't come and you're snowed in for a while. And so you're definitely just at home. But um, and I think last year, cause I was working on myself and in terms of stress management and all that, it was harder. So I'm looking forward this year to, uh, learn how to cross country ski. I've skied in other ways, but that's my main thing and learn new ways to get out there and not let the weather, um, not that let the weather uh, best you, you know, there's so much to enjoy about it, um, with the right mindset. So I would say that that would be the main thing. Okay. Love it. It goes back to what you said earlier about that, like bloom where you're planted, find a way to thrive wherever you are. I think that's a beautiful mindset. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. (laughs) I hope to keep applying it. We'll see once we get to month five. (laughs) (laughs) I'm excited to see this winter series coming up. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Me too. Hopefully I'm successful in in, in my skiing attempts. We'll see. (laughs) All right, Paola, do you have any final words or any last messages that you want to leave the audience with today? Oh, goodness. Um, I suppose, um, you know, uh, I think uh, you can hear, you know, all this amazing advice from all these incredible, incredibly beautiful, wise people, uh, people who are on any step of their journey. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's about, uh, you and your own journey and, you know, you can get as much feedback as you want from your friends, family, you know, everyone, but, um, and, and you can take those to heart and really consider all these different perspectives. But, um, at the end of the day, only, you know, what it is like to be you and those answers may not, um, how you want to live and who you want to be might not always be understood by everyone around you. Um, and that's where the courage comes in to do it anyway, because you know, you know, um, the, the freedom of, of living and becoming who you want to be on your own terms. So, um, yeah, I suppose, I suppose that's all I want to say only as someone who read a lot of books, uh, advice books, and then took a lot of them to heart. And a lot of them were super amazing and helpful, but also there was a lot that I had to learn myself because I think, um, so many things have more value when you've learned them throughout your own experiences. Mm -hmm. And yeah. So yeah, I guess, I guess maybe that's it. Encouragement for myself as well to keep going. (laughs) Beautiful. All right. Where can we find you online? Oh, yes. So um, I have a YouTube channel. I think that's the main thing um, for sure. And I have an Instagram page um, and I have also an Etsy shop where I sell my very strange art. <laughs> so, <laughs> the um, Cottage I, Fairy. I, like... <laughs> I have yes. to say, you can say the name. The Cottage Fairy. Is the, the Cottage name. Fairy. Yes. The Cottage Fairy. Uh, yeah. The same thing kind of everywhere. And um, the links to my shop and my Instagram are slightly different, but they're all connected. And um, yeah. And so all of that. And uh, yeah, I make a a watercolor art just inspired by fairy tales and folklore. And um, yeah, so uh, uh, it's uh, very niche. So you can always check that out as well. It is very different. (laughs) Amazing. Thank you so much, Paola, for an amazing conversation today. I really honestly enjoyed it. So everyone listening, make sure you check her out. I'll link, (laughs) I'll I'll leave all the links down below. Yeah. Well, thank you as well for being such a lovely host and yeah. Yeah. It's an honor to, for you to give me this time and to talk with me and you're just such a lovely person. So thank you. It's been lovely to talk to you as well. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.